The chain rule. Okay, so I don't think it's super hard. Um, okay, here's here's the notation for, for the chain rule. Okay, hold on. They totally distracted me now. Okay, now when I write the notation for this, it's going to look confusing, but I mean, I guess that is what it is, right? Okay, so if I have a function that's inside another function, <laughs> the chain rule is going to be, I'm going to drive the outside and then multiply by the derivative of the outside. Okay, so this is going to be the notation. It's going to be the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, so the g of x. Okay, so this is uh, technically the, the definition. So let me, let me explain what that means. Let's do a few examples. Okay, so I always call this the chain rule, and I say um, the derivative times Okay, so perhaps those words are going to be more valuable to you than the notation. Okay. All right, so here's my example. Let's say I have f of x is equal to uh, negative 3 times the quantity of 2x squared plus 1 squared. Okay, so this is a scenario where you have a chain rule because you have a quantity that's in parentheses. Okay, what is my quantity that's in the parentheses? 2x squared plus 1. Okay, so the outside is negative 3, let's just call it x, negative 3x squared, and the inside is 2x squared plus 1. Okay. 2x squared plus 1. Oh, I just replaced that piece with an x. The stuff. Do you want me to use a different word than x? Negative 3 times stuff squared. Is that better? That sounds, it sounded pretty cool. All right, so if I had negative 3x squared, what is the derivative of negative 3x squared? negative 6x. Okay, so instead of saying x, I'm going to say the stuff. Remember the stuff that's in the parentheses? Okay, so I derive the outside. It becomes negative 6x, which I'm replacing this with the stuff. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what is the derivative of 2x squared plus 1? 4x, good. Oh, if it was a cube, yes, you would lose one from the exponent. Yeah. But you still want to keep that. It would be squared out Yeah, it would turn into a two. Yeah. Okay. So all I would have left to do is just to simplify this to make this more simple. Okay. So I could. Uh, the derivative of the inside piece. Okay. So you could write this as. Uh, negative 24x times 2x squared plus 1, and leave it in factored form. That would be okay. Or if you felt like you needed to FOIL that, you could write this as negative 48x cubed minus 24x. Okay, so this and the one above are both equally simplified. One is in factored form and one is in standard form. Okay, so let's do another one. Um, example number two. OK, 
Okay, let's say we have f of x is going to equal 2 uh, negative x squared plus x to the fifth power. Okay, what would this one be? Okay, yeah, so 10 times the stuff to the fourth power, and then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what would the derivative of the inside be? Negative 2x plus 1. Okay, so this one we could distribute the 10 through the linear quantity and call this negative 20x plus 10 times negative x squared plus x to the fourth. And unless you feel like you want to foil that out four times and then another time with the other quantity, <laughs> I would probably leave that one in, in factored form. What? Okay, got it? Okay. Okay, so let's try um, a little bit different look. What if I have the square root of negative x cubed plus 4? What if I have that? Okay, do I have something that's inside a quantity? Yeah. Okay, so right now this is written in radical form. What would the exponential form of this be? Exactly. Okay, so you can do this when things are written in radical form and convert it into exponential and then use this chain rule. Okay, so now we can derive it. What is the derivative of the outside? So if I have a 1 half in the exponent, it first is going to be multiplied by the 1 that's in the front, right? The invisible 1. So what's the number in front? 1 half. Okay. And then what's my new exponent going to be if I subtract 1 from it? What's that? There you go. Good. Negative 1 half. Okay. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? Good. Okay. And the last thing that I have to do is rewrite this correctly. If I have a negative exponent, what do I need to do? Can I leave it? Good. I just simply put it into the bottom. So do you see how I have a 1 half that's already written as a fraction? I have a 1 in the top and a 2 in the bottom. I'm just going to write 1 fraction. Okay. Do you see how my negative 3x squared is on the top? There's nothing underneath it, so I'm going to have negative 3x squared. The 2 is already in the bottom, and then I'm going to go ahead and move that uh, quantity down into the bottom. And by doing that, my exponent then turns positive. It did. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Good. Kind of another one we need one more like that. Okay, let me do one that's kind of similar, but yet still different. Let's do I don't know if this is too many too much in one, but I'm gonna try for it. I have faith in you guys. Okay, what if I have this scenario where it's written as a fraction? How would I rewrite that? Okay, so if I have the one half, or excuse me, I said that wrong. 
If I have the square root, what's that the same as what exponent? To the one half. Now, if I want to, I, I, don't, I could potentially use the quotient rule and do it that way, but I would still eventually have to use the chain rule. So, actually, let's do it that way. I'm going to do it both ways. There's two ways to do this. Okay, you can write this as negative 2 over the quantity of 2x plus 1 to the 1 half, right? Okay, so I have a fraction. Okay, so let's say I do quotient rule. Okay, so who remembers how do you do quotient rule? What's my little saying? No, start with the ho. Ho d high minus high d ho. Okay, ho d high minus high d ho over the ho squared. Okay, so the ho. What? <laughs> I was I was gone. I don't understand. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I will give you the video. <laughs> Why are they? <laughs> You're gonna have to watch the notes, Tommy. <laughs> I did record them, so you know exactly what we're referring to. Oh joy. Okay. <laughs> It's a quotient rule. Did you record it while you were doing it in class? Or was it yeah. Class? Okay. I recorded it. We have it. lovely commentary in there. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so the whole, what's the derivative of the high? Okay. Zero. So derivative of negative two is zero. <laughs> minus, what is the high? <laughs> negative two. Okay, now what is the derivative of the whole? Okay, what do I have to do when I derive the x, the two x to the one half? What rule am I going to have to do at this point? The chain rule. So I'm going to do a quotient rule, and within it, I have to do a chain rule. Okay, so I'm at the part where I'm deriving the bottom piece, the two x plus one to the one half power. So what is the derivative of the outside? So what goes in the front? One half, two x plus one. What's one half minus one? Negative one half times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? What's the derivative of two x? Two. The derivative of two x is two. all over my whole squared. So I have to the one half squared. Do you see what happens there? Absolutely. Okay. I just didn't know how many people would follow that. Because you all look very confused right now. <laughs> okay. So, wait, on the first term we have zero times the quantity, right? So the very first term completely goes away. And then I have minus a negative, so that makes plus. So this cancels out. I have a 2. I have 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. I don't want to do too much at once. So everybody said on the bottom I have what? The what? Because 2 times a half is 1, right? The first term? Okay. I'm not sure exactly what you're looking at. Okay, so going from left to right, right? So I have 0 times this. 0. Okay, then I have minus a negative, which is a positive at that point. Okay, so then I have plus 2 times a half, which is 1, times this. So I just put the 2 in the front. Positive. And then you guys already got part of this just to the first power, right? What happens if I have a negative exponent? It goes in the bottom. It goes in the bottom. If I already have that exact quantity in the bottom, what do I do with the exponents? 
add them together. So what's one plus a half? One. One and a half. Or three halves. I like that better. I'm going to say three halves. Too much? Backwards? Start over? Should I do another just straight up radical? Example? You should do that one but without doing the quotient. Okay. Let's try again. So how about... Let's say I have negative two cube roots of four x squared plus two x. Okay, how would I do this one? First rewrite it. Yeah, four x squared. Yep. Okay, so which what is the part that's my quantity? The piece that's gonna be in parentheses. Okay, so if I have a cube root, what's that the same as? What exponent? One third. Good. Okay, so this is going to become. Hello. I lost. There it is. Sorry. It wouldn't write for me. So negative two times the quantity of four x squared plus two x to the one third. Okay, everybody okay with the rewrite? No? <laughs> but I'm only on the first step. The cube root? The very first oh, okay, step. Now you're okay? Yes, I just rewrote it. Yeah. Okay, now we derive. Okay, so I'm using chain rule, so I'm, I derive the outside. So what's negative 2 times 1 third? negative two-thirds, my inside stays, and my new exponent, what is one-third minus one? Negative two-thirds, good. Now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. What is the derivative of four x squared? Okay, good, so eight x plus two, everybody follow that? Good. Okay, so now I have a negative exponent. I can't leave it that way. I'm going to write this as a top and a bottom. Okay, so what are the things that are going to be on the top? Okay, do you see how I have a two-thirds? What number is on the top? What? Two. Okay, you can, yeah, negative two. Okay, um, the quantity over there, 8x plus 2, is on the top, right? It's not written as a fraction. The numbers that are on the bottom are going to be the 3, and then I'm going to take the quantity that has a negative exponent and put it into the bottom. So it's going to be negative 2 times 8x plus 2 over 3 times the quantity 4x squared plus 2x. What's my exponent become when I move it down? The 2 thirds. Yes, and my new exponent is 2 thirds. <laughs> Okay, so you could leave it like that. If you felt like the top needed to be simplified, you could say negative 16x minus 4. But that's not really necessary. But it is equivalent, just so you know. How do we do on that one? Should I do one that's a fraction again, but without the radical, so don't do 2 and 1? Let me try this one. I don't know what color I'm on. F of x. 2 over negative x cubed plus 4. Okay. So let's say I want you to do this one by using the chain rule. Okay. You could do it by using the quotient rule. But how could we do this using the chain rule instead? How could I rewrite this? What piece would be my quantity? The bottom. And if I pull it up, what does my exponent come, become? Negative, negative one. Yes, Josiah?
everybody okay on pulling that up and just rewriting it? So I'm not changing anything, I'm just rewriting the way it looks. Okay, so now if I chain rule this, I would do the derivative of the outside. So it's 2 times negative 1. Negative 2. And then I have my inside, negative x cubed plus 4. I subtract 1 from my exponent, so it's negative 1 minus 1. Negative 2. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? Negative 3x squared. Okay, so now I have a quantity that has a negative exponent. I need to rewrite it and put it into the bottom. What are my top pieces? Negative 3x squared and negative 2. Can I go ahead and multiply those two together? Does everybody follow that step? So negative 2 times negative 3x squared would be 6x squared for my top. And then the quantity just simply gets moved downstairs. And that would be it. How do you do on that one? Good stuff, right? Stuff that makes you smile. <laughs>